Hello and welcome to WeConnect Academy Module 3, Aligning Your Business Strategy. We're going to talk um, a little bit about what it takes to align your business strategy. We're going to build on Modules 1 and 2, which are available through uh, the WeConnect Academy e-learning tool. So I'm also going to show you how to access that um, because we have some limitations with the, with the webinar. You're not always able to hear the videos. Um, and see all the content. So the best way to do that for self-registered and certified businesses is actually go through the WeConnect Academy and, um, and you can see the whole thing there at your leisure at any time you want. So with that, my name is Liz Whitehead. I'm the Director of Women's Business Development for WeConnect International. And I've covered modules uh, one and two. They're available on our YouTube channel, which is uh, at youtube.com slash WeConnection, and I'm going to go into Module 3. So aligning and executing your business strategy. Well, um, this, a lot of the tools we're going to go through in this module are um, general to any business in terms of aligning and executing your business strategy. There are going to be some specific WeConnect uh, tips, so I'm going to go over those in most detail. Um, and I'm going to, as I mentioned, skip over some things like the videos, so you'll be able to see those um, on your own, and I'll show you how to do that too. Um, these modules were developed with support from Walmart, and um, they continue to help us uh, train women entrepreneurs. So the objective of this is to explore effective ways to align and implement your business strategy to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage in the global marketplace. So that's a lot. That's a lot to do with one module, but I'm going to give you some tips for, okay, what are the next steps that I need to do now that I have, one, I understand um, my business, my mission, my vision, my capabilities. Two, I understand my customer. I understand who I'm going after. Now how do I put all this into a plan? So, um, as I mentioned, you're going to look at your mission and vision, which we covered in the first module, um, and your business plan and goals to develop that business strategy. So, the specific success criteria is, is going to be different for every business, um, but they often have a direct co correlation to profitability. So, um, that's one of the key things you want to keep in mind, that you may have income coming in, but you also want to pay attention to expenses going out, and that's your profitability. So um, we want to determine your success criteria uh, by knowing what it is you want to accomplish. We've revisited the mission, vision, and strategy in Module 1 to make sure that they're aligned. Um, and the next thing you want to do is define your key performance indicators. They're often referred to as KPIs. Um, what determines if your business goals are met? Um, you want to track your progress. So where are you in the timeline of getting this work done? And how am I going to measure success? And we're going to go through um, some examples. Uh, one great tool uh, to set these goals is what we call SMART goals. Now, the module gets into what each of specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound means. I'm going to cover it just really briefly, um, that your goals should have these things. So they're specific to um, what you're trying to achieve. It's measurable, so you can know if you succeeded. It's attainable, so it's a realistic goal. Um, it's relevant, meaning it's bringing you toward that goal of profitability, um, growing your company. And it's time-bound, so you need to establish it in a certain timeline to know that you've achieved the goal and, uh, and are on your way to success. So there's more about each of these things in here, um, but what I want to start with is just some examples. Um, Increase new customer acquisitions by 5% at the end of Q1. So it's very specific. Um, it may or may not be attainable for your business. That's for you to decide. Um, and it is time-bound um, by the end of Q1. Now, the, some of the things like specific, is it attainable, is it relevant, those are going to be specific to your business. Um, but I think that most of the people that are um, involved with WeConnect International and participating in the webinar because they want to increase new customers. Um, improve customer satisfaction by 20% by year end. That's somewhat of a more vague goal. Um, so more vague in that um, you want 
the key here is, is measuring. You want to improve customer satisfaction. How are you going to measure that customer satisfaction is improved? Is it a survey? Is it um, renewals uh, in your business? That's going to be um, very specific to your business. And so that's a great goal, but you also have to think about sort of how you're measuring that. Launch new social media campaigns through two outlets by the end of next month. So that's good. You can de definitely measure did you launch them, um, which two outlets did you use. You can measure that by the end of the next month. That's an example of a goal that's probably going to need some follow-on goals because you, then you're going to want to see how did those social media campaigns do? What are the analytics and measurements you're going to use to actually evaluate whether those campaigns were successful? Um, another example of a goal you might use is reach Q1 revenue goals of 10% increase by early March. So um, if you have a goal of increasing your revenue by 10%, by early March, um, that's a little bit before the end of Q1, so you might have that goal already set, and this is a goal to actually accelerate that. You want to um, accelerate and motivate people to reach a goal uh, at an earlier time frame. Perhaps it's developing a comprehensive CSR program, and we're going to get into CSR a little bit today, um, by focusing on environmental, social, and governance issues. And Lastly, contract with one WeConnect International Corporate member by the end of next year. Um, these are all just examples of goals. And again, you have to look at your company and decide, are they smart? Is it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound? The other thing um, in terms of your objectives that you want to think about is, is this going to motivate, are these goals to motivate me? Are these for my business? Or is this for my company? Am I motivating employees? So these kind of goals and strategies can, can um, work for different audiences too. Are you incentivizing people? Are you motivating them? What, is, what do you want to achieve with these goals is one of the key things you want to think about. So once you've established the goal, then you just need to back that up into an action plan. So you might have a business plan and you know, now is a good time to actually uh, revise your business plan, to revisit your business plan, and look in on that and say, okay, if this is the goal I want to achieve, how, how does it align with my business plan? Um, an action plan is going to be um, a much smaller target. Uh, you're going to break down each goal into smaller tasks or actions, again, the realistic deadline for each one. Now, again, you want this to be aligned with your business plan, but the action plan is going to be smaller than that. It's going to be specific to these goals. Um, your business plan might cover three to five years. Your action plan is going to cover the time frame um, and the deadline that you set for your goal. Um, the things you want to con consider with your action plan, the resources needed, the time required, the cost, the responsible party. Again, that may or may not be you as the head of your company. Um, and what level priority is it? Is it high, medium, or low priority? Does it need to happen now? You want to continually review that plan to ensure you stay on track to reach your goal. And remember, it's a work in progress. Expect to make changes as you go forward, especially depending on the time frame. If, you, if you're setting a time frame of a year, 18 months, there might need to be changes as you go forward. And just keep working your plan. Um, even as you, if, as you face obstacles or setbacks, just keep in mind, okay, am I still following the, the, um, the what I need to do to achieve this goal? Do I need to revise the goal? But don't give up on um, making goals and, and working to achieve them. So this is an example of an action plan. Your goal is to increase new customer acquisitions by 5% by the end of Q1. So what do you need to know for that? First of all, you need to know how many customers do you currently have? And what number is a 5% increase? So you want to make sure that you have that at hand um, and that not only you know that, but the people who are important to make to implement this action plan in your company know that. So um, we direct a lot of the trainings to our business owners, but one of the reasons we like to put it online is that that's a way for you to actually share that with your business development people, with your sales people, with your marketing people. Um, so that they can see, okay, this is our goal, 
and this is how we're go going to achieve it. Um, so not only do you want to share with them these types of trainings, but you also want to share what your goal is and your plan um, because these are the people that are going to help you with it as your team. So um, if you want to increase new customer acquisitions by 5% at the end of Q1, to do those things, you might need to engage to reconnect international corporate partners by week six. So week six of the of the of the year, um, and launch a social media campaign because that's going to drive the marketing. Um, so those two things then become separate goals in your plan. So there's an overarching goal and an objective that you have, but now you have two other goals that you have to um, that you have to reach. And so there's going to be a breakdown in actions that need to reach those goals, such as. Maybe you're going to source and contract with a WeConnect International Certified Marketing Marketing Agency. Maybe you're going to outsource that social media campaign. And that's going to cost money, so you're going to allocate $20,000. Maybe you're going to hire a social media person. Maybe you're going to have, um, you know, maybe you have a social media person and you're just, you just want to make sure that there's a specific campaign toward this goal. Um, whatever it is, you want to make sure that all of your actions align with um, that goal you want to achieve. Uh, and you're identifying the resources it's going to take. If you think it's going to take $20,000, you need to make sure you have that budgeted and that, um, that uh, you can reasonably achieve the goal with those resources. The second one is engage to We Connect International Corporate Partners by week six. You have to define what engagement means here. Does that mean um, you've communicated with them? Does that mean you, in, in this example, it's successfully completing an RFP process. Um, you have to determine, is that attainable? Are you aware of RFPs that are coming out? If not, you might have to do a little more work developing a relationship with that corporate partner to see what's coming up. Um, are they going to be realistic uh, targets for this goal? And again, this is just an example. You might have an action plan that's based on uh, hiring five new people. You might have an action plan that's starting a new uh, new department in your company. We're going to talk a little bit about CSR. Um, the important thing to remember from this is that you set a goal and then make a plan um, with a lot of other smaller goals within that time frame. So one of the things that we do want to talk about because it relates to that engaging we connect international corporate partners is customer targeting. So we talk a lot about understanding and reaching your customer in module two. Um, so I suggest revisiting that uh, when you get a chance. But this is also um, customer targeting is selecting the market segments that represent the most value. So the most value for the customer means that your product or service has a high correlation with their needs. You know they need what you're selling. Most value for your business might mean they're loyal, they have great profit potential, maybe it's a prestige client that's going to help you get other clients. So what you really want to focus on here is the value that you're bringing. Um, what is the value of this goal to your company and how does it provide value for you in the long term? Not only that, but you always want to be thinking about how you can provide value to your corporate clients. You know, it's not just a matter of a transaction, although that is definitely part of the sales process. Um, but long before that happens, long before the deal is closed, it's a process of building relationships and adding value to your customer, showing them that doing business with you is going to add value to them within their company and to their company's um, bottom line, their quality, or their service. So as I mentioned, the videos don't work um, through this platform, but I'm going to show you how to access them later. Um, so business development. Um, when we talk about business development in this context, we're talking about growth. Are you ready to grow? Um, are you, for example, in the, um, the example of acquiring 5% 5 5 new customers um, or 5% customer acquisition, are you ready for that? What are the things that need to be in place for you to be able to service those customers, for you 
to be able to provide them a great customer experience. Um, maybe you need to look at your financial performance. Um, are you going to need additional resources to be able to service those clients? Um, what are the products and service demands? What are the market trends? And is your team going to be there with you? Do you need more employees? Do you need current employees to work more, work harder? And what are the things that are going to keep them around to do that? Those are all things you want to consider when you set these goals. Um, you also want to assess the competitive env environment. I'm not going to go too much into a SWOT analysis, which is your strengths, weaknesses, um, and, the th and threats. Um, but we're going to go through it just briefly so you can see, okay, these are the things that I need to um, identify before I, uh, as I make these goals. Um, it's going to help you identify the areas of opportunities, but then also to exploit your strengths. But then it's also going to identify the threats. So um, where are the weaknesses and where are the threats to your company so that you at least know those and you can compensate for those. Um, and then you want to continually ass assess risk. This is something um, it's good to start thinking about. Uh, um, typically, entrepreneurs are not very risk averse, but you want to realistically assess your risk. It's something that the corporate members are going to be doing all the time. Um, so it's good to get in the habit of that language. Um, what's going to bring the most results to your business with the least amount of risk, the least amount of leveraging your credit, the least amount of, um, you know, putting yourself out there to possibly not deliver? And then what variables might compromise or damage your growth plans? Um, that's really a lot. These are um, long-term in terms of your business development, but you want to be thinking about these things as you set your goals. And then again, include any threats so you can develop a plan to prevent or manage issues. For example, if you think that um, a key member of your team might be leaving, might be moving on, might be moving to a new company, then you want to have a plan to address that before um, it, pose, it does pose a threat. So um, if you create an action plan for growth, uh, you want to make sure that you're addressing all of those issues. So this is an example of a SWOT, you know, this is what a SWOT analysis looks like. You want to put um, on the positive side strengths and opportunities, on the more negative side weaknesses and threats, um, and identify those things. I'm not going to spend too much time going through a SWOT analysis because you've probably done it before, um, but I think this is good uh, once you've set, you know, your goal and then you have an action plan to really identify, okay, where can we, um, where can we achieve these objectives? and where um, might we have challenges doing that. So there's um, different examples of growth strategies. We're just going to go through a couple. One is, that, is simply market penetration. You're going to sell more of your current product to current customers. So as you're setting goals and making plans, you want to think about, okay, is this what I want to do? Sell more of my product to the customers I have. Um, you know, this is generally a pretty low-risk uh, way to grow, um, and you can find new ways for your customers to use your product. Um, that's going to be, you know, I always recommend when people get certified that that's the first step they should take, is look at your current list of clients and see if any of them are interested in your certification. Perhaps they can introduce you to new divisions, even if you're already doing business with them. Perhaps there's other departments you can, you can do business with. Again, it's, um, it's a low-risk strategy. It's a way to touch your current customers and continue to develop that relationship. The other is market development. So sell more of your current product to an adjacent market. So you offer your um, product or service to customers in another city, region, or country. Um, or I think in the context of WeConnect International, let's say that you're doing great business with Marriott. Maybe you want to look into um, other hotels or other uh, companies in the hospitality industry that could potentially buy your product. And then there's alternative channels. You know, um, selling direct to the consumer online. Uh, you want to, maybe you want to partner with someone to distribute in another place. There's um, lots of different growth strategies. And again, as you think about, okay, how much do I want to grow? Or I really want this new customer. I want, um, I want to uh, do business with one of these giant multinational corporations. You want to go back to your goals and your action plan and make sure that all of that makes sense given, um, you know, your timelines, 
what you, the resources you have to achieve that and what your growth plan is. Um, the, another way to grow your company is product development. Maybe you're going to develop a new product um, and you can sell that to existing customers or new customers. Um, enhancing your productivity. So if you have, if you can get another uh, machine that's going to be able to, you're going to be able to double your production, that's great. Um, maybe you need to hire new people, additional equipment, space, and staff so you can uh, manage your growth. And then strategic collaboration. Um, one of the things we connect international offers is the ability to connect with women business owners globally. Um, either, and you can connect with them through partnerships. Perhaps you want a joint venture to um, come together to sell to a, a particular corporation, or even mergers and acquisitions. Maybe you're going to buy a company that's going to uh, contribute to the growth of your own company. So what I'm going to finish up with is CSR and your business strategy. Um, there's a lot of talk about corporate social responsibility. Um, for in many cases, the We Connect International representative sits in the, of, of the um, corporate member sits in the CSR space. Many times they don't. Um, many times they're in procurement uh, or purchasing. But in any case, they're all um, what they're doing in terms of looking for diverse suppliers. While it is supporting their bottom line, they are closely aligned with CSR. So it's good for you to know about um, how to integrate it into your business strategy. Because as we ask our corporate members, um, as, as they engage in CSR activities, they also want to see that their suppliers um, that are going to be good partners to them are also engaging in CSR. So this represents voluntary actions that a business can take over and above the legal requirements to address um, competitive interests and the interests of the stakeholders, so the customers, the employees, investors, and communities at large. A comprehensive strategy should be integrated within your overall business strategy and should address social and ecological dimensions. So um, as you're looking at responsible, sustainable, and transparent approaches to this, there are a couple things to think about um, in, in terms of what a CSR strategy can do. I think one easy one when we're talking about We Connect businesses is how much are you, bu are you buying from other women? How, much, um, how many of your suppliers are women? And as you are looking to approach our corporate members, can you tell them a good story about what you're doing um, in terms of supplier diversity? Because that, again, makes you a strong partner for them. Um, another example is uh, some companies have volunteer programs for their employees. And so this serves a dual purpose, right? It's um, an activity, a team building activity for your employees. It's a retention tool um, because they feel rewarded and gratified by doing this activity. And um, it also gets you out in the community and it, it enhances your brand and is um, able to apply to the social and ecological goals that you have. Um, these are things to think about as, as you do grow um, and are seen as a leader in your community, what are you, um, what can your company give back and what, in what ways are these integrated with it in your business strategy? I think um, for a lot of our corporate members, you know, it's no longer a nice to have, but a need to have in terms of um, something that's gonna make your business ecologically sustainable. Um, environmentally friendly? Is your packaging environmentally friendly? Um, how do you manage, uh, you know, waste in your company, whether it's recycling or something more um, industrial or chemical waste? You want to make sure that you're addressing all of those things up front and in a proactive way um, because these are things that our big corporate members um, are going to want to see and it's going to differentiate you if you have um, those kind of You know, um, these are some of the areas, community development, education, environment, ethical business practices, fair trade and ethical sourcing, human rights, and philanthropy. So these are just some of the practices uh, that you have. And again, you want to go back to your goal and your objective within your company, and you want to make sure that your CSR activities are aligning with that, um, and that they're going to serve the purpose of motivating your employees of um, feeling rewarded, of building your brand within the community, all of those things, whatever your goals are, 
We want your CSR practices to be aligned with your business, not just an extra thing that you do. So we talked a little bit about this, and I think the key, the key part here, I'm not going to go through this slide in detail, but that CSR does add value. Um, that goes back to the key thing that you want to say that you're providing to your clients and potential clients, which is that you're adding value to them in the marketplace. These are some of the benefits. Um, what I want to, of, of CSR, and I think that, again, as I mentioned, I, a lot of these slides um, are going to be beneficial for you to go through on your own and then also to go through with uh, your own employees. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to do that. Um, so the way you access, you sh if you are a self-registered or certified business, you should have received um, Um, you should have received the link to the We Connect Academy. So this is where you access it. Set this link, and I will put that in the chat window so that you have it. Um, and then you use your login, uh, your we, the login that you use for your We Connect uh, application. So that it's typically your email address. It's the email address that you use to. Um, get information about this webinar, and it's the one that we have on file for you. So you put your email address in the username right here. Mine is in my email address. And then um, the first time you log in, you're going to click Lost Password. You're going to get an email that has a temporary password, password for you, and then you're going to log in. Um, and that's the way, uh, from then on, you'll be able to use a password that you create to sign in. But the first time, you won't have a password uh, to do that. So you want to make sure you use your email address. Um, okay. Once you sign in, this is what you're going to see. And I just closed the chat window so you can see. Um, once you log in, you're going to see um, a series of modules. Um, I can actually see all of them in all three languages, but you're going to see them in the language that you selected um, as your primary language. So um, if you selected English as your primary language, then you'll see they will come up 1 to 10 um, in English. If you selected Spanish, they will come up 1 to 10 in Spanish, and Chinese 1 to 10. So um, you'll be able to click on that. Let's see. And here you have an option of English or Spanish. When you click on Module 1, you go down here, click on that. Um, and then it's at, you'll see the list of um, everything that is covered in the module. Um, I have been here before, so it asked me, do I want to resume where I left off? And you can go through everything I'm going through in this module and the other modules on your own time. Um, the other benefit of this is you'll actually be able to see, if you look at this on a laptop or a desktop computer, you'll be able to see the videos. Now, if you, you should be able to log in um, from a mobile device. But again, you'll only be able to see the slides. You won't be able to see the videos through the mobile device just based on the, uh, the bandwidth. Um, the, again, the benefit of this is that you can go through and um, look at them yourself. You can revisit the information I covered today or in previous webinars, um, and you can share it with your staff. So as you think about what kind of goals you want to set, how you want to bring your staff in, what are the CSR goals you want to set, you might want to share this information with them and bring them into the process. So that's um, really what I wanted to cover today. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, I am going to open up to questions in a little bit, which you can send me in the chat window. But I wanted to um, thank you for joining. And I hope you will also join us tomorrow 
um, for our webinar on safe and social travel for the female business traveler. So that's going to be October 15th at 10 a.m. Eastern, and you can find out more on our calendar of events on our website, which is reconnectinternational.org. Thanks.